<laughs> you have two separate. Oh, ah, good. Here. Thank is you. That, because, is there a reason? Yeah, for that? this is to show you right way and wrong way. We did it for capacity, but I wasn't here when the lid was made, and I just didn't describe it well enough. And so they went with making this lid that's driven me nuts. And finally, for the excuse for this class, I got a lid made the way I want. I need you need to have some edges to keep rodents out. They made it so it's really hard to get in there and lift it. And actually, the edge doesn't work very good. The, the rodents here. If there's a little gap, the rodent has to hang onto the sidewall and figure out the gap. They can't do it. Here, they can hang right here and look and squeeze and bam, guess what? Yeah. We have, fortunately it's not a rat, I don't think, but we have a mouse. And see, you can see why I don't like it too, right? Yeah. Not easy to open. Yeah. Oh, there he is. I yeah. yeah. You yeah. This has got much better castings. Look at these castings. Really lovely. You know? In that little hole right there. I saw him because I can If you put it outside, you need to put a screen underneath it because the moles will get in it and eat the worms up. Yeah, you got to make it so tight the moles can get get in. That's as simple as that, you know? Um, and um, this I can tell there's places in here that are too dry. Mouse hotel. You know? Yeah. We're going to be putting a new lid on this and then the mouse will get, a, 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 you know, either exterpiated or um, um, evicted. <laughs> depending on its luck, you know, <laughs> exterminated or evicted, I guess is that, you know, depending on its luck, one or the other will occur. Yeah. But actually, this is a, a further along pile. You can see this is really lovely stuff here. That would make fine tea, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there's millions of baby worms in there, too. It's just, it's just crawling with worms. Wow. What's interesting is I haven't seen any eggs. I'd show you eggs, but it seems like we're kind of in between on the eggs. The eggs look like little tiny lemons. They got a nub on them. That might have been one. Well, maybe at, at the end of the class, I'll come back here and explore for eggs if anybody wants to see them. So your harvest technique for this? Um, Just scrape to, this to keep, off. Yeah, but you want to get the baby worms out? Nah, don't worry about it. Don't There's millions about of worms. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. If they happen to go on the tea, they'll probably survive. They can, they can stay aquatic a good long time with that air. Mm -hmm. They'll probably be fine. I don't know how well they'll do, though, where you put them, because they're going to have to find some concentration of carbon to do well. Yeah. But if you mulch your beds and stuff, they'll be in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Your mulch will break down faster, mm -hmm. but they're making good food. Okay, thank you, Juan. Juan's our star. Juan, can you get that? Um, Patrick, is that the normal way you just get the stuff? You take your fingers and just scrape a half inch off the top? Yeah. Um, no, usually there's much more. and You can take a trial and scrape it off. In the summer, one box like this, I could fill half a five-gallon bucket a week. Yeah. Okay, so here, um, can people kind of show it? Do you want to pass this around, or, or you don't want to get cooties? That's the egg. That's the egg. Yeah, don't break it now. Mm -hmm. okay. What are we looking at? The egg there. Yeah. It's right there. That's an egg. Right that's an there. egg. Yeah. Oh yeah. Pass it around. Let people see it. Okay. That's a worm egg. I do not know how many worms are in an egg. But from the numbers, I'm sure there's more than one. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, that's what they look like. Oh, they've been, they've been here that's for... That's Oh. Somebody made two so deep spots, like, we cut in half sometime It looks kind of there, but it looks like the little balls all together. Mm -hmm. And the little balls all together. Are they casting? 12 inches in bedding, you mean? No, for the box. Almost at least like castings in Espanol. I like 12 inches a lot. I have no John, idea. why don't you talk about your system? Not mine, it's what, what well, no, the system you prefer, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's another system that oh, they use mechanized yeah. operations. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 You know, has a thousand head of cows. Yeah. Hmm? No. Everybody saying the egg? Massive worm compost system. Everybody yeah. see the egg? Huh? <laughs> It'd be like a long bump oh, yeah. the yeah. length of this greenhouse. And it, it's a tray that sits about this high off the ground. It is wire meshed finer than this and stronger than this on the, on the base of it and it's still got the sides like this and it stays open it's, they usually put them in a building like a hoop house and you get your bedding all set and you charge it up with the worms and uh, it's mechanized it's made to make a lot of castings on a regular basis so what happens is they have a uh, they call a gandy it runs across on like a little conveyor across the tops and it, it it lays out food like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. right? And the food it's laying out is the compost that's been composted four to five weeks in a bin system, dairy manure, right? And the worms come up to feed on that. And then 
their castings are putting down as far away. They're, they're going away from that. So the casting's in on the bottom of the bed. Then a bar comes across the bed on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And all it does is, if, if this was the bottom of the bed, it just moves this mesh like this. So the, the mesh is horizontal. And the bar comes across and the mesh goes like that. But just that action, that little bit of action, the castings fall through the mesh onto the ground. And in California, they're letting them dry on, on cement. In New York State, they, they have other systems where they, you know, they can um, convey them out or have buckets underneath them. But the idea is that goes down and a little bit of castings drop. And then food comes by the next day, and then a day later, it goes again. So it's just dropping a little bit of casting. So it's a top feed, bottom harvest system. And they've done that because it can be mechanized so well. Oh, people get anywhere from $20 a pound to $2 a pound. Yeah. Depends on your market and your ability to market and the quality. Yeah, so the little tiny packages. Yeah. yeah. There's you know. a producer in Traveler's Rest. What's he getting? Um, I couldn't tell you this year. I'm not sure. Well, is it, do you know what price ever that you have? I want to say it was like fifteen dollars yeah, for a pound big. and a half a bag. Uh -huh. Yeah. But you could buy in bulk. You could buy uh, Gaylords three yeah. by three by fours. Um, you know, I don't know how many pounds are in it, but it's quite a bit. But yeah, yeah, the castings yeah. are pretty wet, so it's it's probably these are dry. Oh, he's these dry. are um, they look like fertilizer almost. Yeah. yeah. It's gray and and fairly hard. See, actually, I think at that point they've lost part of the vitality of it. Yeah. The wife has really been put to sleep and is going to have a hard time waking up. Sure. I wouldn't let them dry that much. Yeah, especially you know? in a back home thing. Yeah. Go for that, that moisture. Of course, yeah. drier ships further. I get why they do that. Yeah, but it's really, they're yeah. selling you basically nutrients. I guess that the growth hormone regulators would still be in there, right? Yeah. But you've lost the microbial diversity, which is wonderful in castings. You know? Some of it. Yeah, you haven't Can you wake that up with molasses and a bubbler or, or not? Uh, yeah, you could still use that in a compost tea brew. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't be good as your own homemade. Ed, thanks as always. All right. Enjoy. Take care, Ed. Um, so on to worm compost tea. Compost tea. It's pretty funny because John says I'm the compost tea man. I say, John, you're the compost tea man. <laughs> you know, I learned a lot of theory from John and stuff, but I've done much more practice than John. What I did um, over time when I worked with golf courses and stuff is I found a guy who would make the compost tea brew package, so I quit worrying about it. But you should probably head back to the old handy dandy handout here and it's a page that has a lot of white on it uh, but you'll see three types it looks like that three types of compost tea so uh, one size does not fit all um, and that's good so no, I don't think vegetables fall into this thing called turf it's about a one-to-one -one, uh, bacterial to fungal ratio. Looks like that, right? And uh, what you're doing is you're putting foods in this. In this, okay. So the first step of tea is extraction. So you got a bunch of compost. You got a column of compost sitting in this brewer, and you and you run the air, and it stirs it up, and it knocks it around. And the water starts to look like comp, like coffee or tea. So what you've done, you've taken all, you've liquefied all the fines, and they've come off into the water, right? And that's extraction. That's a, that's an extract. So you could take that extract and spray it, or you can multiply it by feeding it. And that's what these things are about. Kelp is a fungal food. Humic acid is a fungal food. Dry molasses is a bacterial food. Gluten is like a uh, substrate and food. Insoluble humic acid is a substrate for fungi and suma minerals, or azomite is a substrate for fungi. So if you look across these things, you'll see the dry molasses was real high in the bacterial one because you're, you're, you're your sugars feed bacteria, so you got 16 ounces of, back, of dry molasses in that formula. In the turf system, you're at uh, 12 ounces of dry molasses, and when you're trying to make a more fungal product, you're at 8 ounces of dry molasses. So you can see you're limiting the sugars as you go down this thing. And um, do you remember, Pat? Was this was this for this was a 50 gallon brew, wasn't it? Yeah. 
we see, what's, the, what's the amount of compost? I can tell by the only No compost. This is just the foods. Oh, it's just the foods. Okay, well, yeah. let me see how much how much molasses. Yeah, that's 50 gallons. So this this is for a 50 gallon brewer. This is a uh, this is 50. Gallon? Yeah, but we're only at about 60. I mean, well, actually, I guess you topped it up after I did it. Is that it, Marshall? No. Because when I looked over here, it was at 60, but now it looks like it's higher. All right. Well, the aerator yeah, itself. I, oh, the aer the aerator uh, took a bunch of space. Up. That's what it is. It was about 60 gallons, right? It was about 80, was it about I underfed it. But it's not feeling very strong and that's why. I looked at it and saw 60 and I guess that I was you were not done filling. It's actually at 80 is what you saw probably. This Back is up. really your most expensive thing. This is the aerator that you use for uh, like a fish shop, uh, pet store mm -hmm. fish. Oh, sorry. That would that would aerate about uh, five five That's or ten big fish tanks, and we're using it to just do this. And inside there is a tube, about like this, and the air runs in that, and it shoots bubbles out, and that's the diffuser. It's just the whole process is just a churning. The early tea brewers were all kinds of pipes and pumps and all that, and you have to clean the pipes all the time. Now you know you gotta you gotta clean this one, you know, and you, your films could. Bio films could end up on here. You might scrub it out or, or uh, put a little, uh, you know, something to disinfect like hydrogen peroxide, you know, between brews. But they they found over time just get it so the the water is really cranking. And what that does is is what what the cranking water does is super aerate that. So you got aerobic microorganisms. Okay, that's why we built the compost pile to aerobically break it down so we get the highest amount of aerobic microorganisms. Then the aerobic microorganisms survived the worm casting production, so there's still a high population of them. Then we put them in here, we feed them, keep giving them air, and they and they multiply real fast. So that's what's going on in the brewer. You're trying to keep those concentrated aerobic organisms that break down foods, make nutrients more available to plants, work in synergy with plant exudates. The plant actually puts out foods for beneficial organisms that have the enzyme system to get the nutrients to bring back to the plant. So you're doing everything to grow these critters. And uh, so that's what the brewer's doing. It's to multiply them. Now you've got a, a million-fold increase in bacteria in 22 hours. So you've got a million-fold more than you had. Now, after, I don't know how many hours this has been going. Not too long, right? No, it's been going since, um, what was it, about six last night. Oh, okay, so it's been going a while. It's been going 17 hours. 17 hours. So now we're getting close to the end where um, you'll be growing all those bacteria. Now you got to super concentrate. Now you uh, take that out with more water, and you can put that much more biology out in the field as a spray. Let me bring up the data on this, this Yeah. Setup. One thing to note, this is, this is overkill. We happen to... Why a bigger bag for this because we were doing a different, different recipe so we took a bag that had its own aeration right into the bag from the from the big brewer so we actually have three pumps on this usually two is plenty but we have a pump putting air right through the compost plus we have two other pumps for two different diffusers at different levels okay. oh yeah hold but, on the pump back there yeah. two pumps two pumps yeah what the, we went wrong on this and it was just like typical working things that go wrong I walked in, saw Marshall filled it to 60 gallons, and did all my recipe for 60 gallons, right? He was working on a valve and water was spilling out. He came back and topped it to 80. I gave him food for 60. Right now I was smelling this and John's smelling it. It's there, but it's not at all strong. Hmm. Yeah, it's dilute. Like. Yeah, it's dilute. That's because it was underfed. You know? So we're at 17 hours, but we'll let this go to the end of the day and then we'll smell it again because it didn't have enough food. It's already settling out there. It's kind of like this, the, the proper smell. It's like if you're ever a kid and we're swimming at the river and and you know that muddy bank that was maybe the river was higher last week and that's down. That dirt that it's it's actually a good smell, but it, but it's doesn't have much air in it. But it's that's the side of a stream. That's the kind of good smell. If it starts to smell like any funky sewagey things, then it means it's going aer anaerobic, and that would be a real disaster. So. Uh, <laughs> This, this is using electricity to make the air. But say the power went down last night. This would stink pretty bad by this morning. Can you, and you save it? Can you salvage if it? Uh, you could try. You would have to add more food and rebubble it and try and bring it, it back. It's like starting over. Right. Yeah. You might want to just dump and go and put another yeah. batch in.
Yeah. Depending on where you're at. You could put a compost pile. It was a good compost pile. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be okay. If the pile better be dry. Yeah, yeah you make if, a you needed, <laughs> if you needed water on a yeah. compost pile, the best would be water would be a compost tea, even if it wasn't finished. 